from Yorktown Heights, New York. It's the Cube covering IBM Cloud Innovation Day. Brought to you by IBM. Hi, I'm Peter Burris from Wikibon, and you're watching the Cube being broadcast from IBM Innovation Day at the Thomas J. Watson Research Lab in beautiful Yorktown, New York. And we've had a number of great conversations thus far. We've got some more on the horizon. Stay with us. Now we've got Jim Comfort. Jim Comfort is a general manager of hybrid cloud services at IBM. Jim, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, Peter. Glad to be here. So, Jim, what does hybrid cloud services as a group do? Uh, we actually, we run infrastructure for clients, that's our business, but we help you uh, advise, build, and manage private cloud, advise, build, and manage consumption of public cloud, AWS, Azure, Google, IBM, and we help you manage and stitch all of that together. So a lot of people think of cloud, they think of this monolithic thing. If I go to the cloud, I'm suddenly, my business has changed. But there's more to it than that. There's a number of different things that a business has to be successful at to succeed at getting to the cloud. What is, what is your perspective on that? Well, first, I completely agree, and this is kind of my first conversation, conversation with clients, is you, know, you need a business strategy, but to execute that strategy, you have to realize it will touch most everything in your business. It'll touch infrastructure, it'll touch applications, it'll touch your DevOps or your development process, morph to DevOps. It'll touch your operations very profoundly, this whole SRE thought, and it will test uh, your, your data governance and management as well as your security and compliance. So, you know, that's the scope that you have to comprehend. But most people leave, you know, they, they start with perhaps the infrastructure first and end up with the data last. Is that the right way to think about this? I, I agree many do and I actually, uh, I have not seen many build it, they will come strategies succeed. And so the, the, what I really look for is, do you understand the business drivers, top line revenue growth, new markets, new insights, new data, and from that can you derive a technology strategy? strategy. What I've seen happen in many cases is if you start from the bottom up, you'll be trapped in what I call the religious wars of technology that never end. And to uh, most people, a lot of folks start from the bottom up because they start from the technology side of the business. Correct. Are you seeing more business people getting engaged and conceptualizing what the strategy needs to be? I, I am, and, and it, it, it starts on both sides. The, the business people will say, I need to move faster than you can move, so I'm going to do something different. And the IT people will say, you know, I, I can do that for you, here's what you need. The two signatures of the most successful transformations are, does the line of business and the IT have the relationship to collaborate? so they actually learn together, and then if they have that, have they actually created a team that understands the new as well as they understand the existing or the old, so they can actually understand what's real, what's not, where's the hype, what really happens, and, and then they get into the rational, you know, real planning decision. So as you think about some of the assessment challenges, because you said you go through the assessment process, what are some of the key questions that a client should start with as they think about undertaking this journey? Uh, we, we really, well, number one is start with the business driver. I, you know, and I, I said that already, but you, you, you have to start with understanding what you're trying to accomplish so you can make choices. And the other is start small enough and get to the end of something so you know what the reality is. And that's where our, this is where we bring in our methods. You know, we hear us talk about the garage method. You hear us talk about do, you know, MVPs and all the language everyone wants to use. We like to start with something and, and start that iterative cycle of learning. That's the key. So with an iterative cycle of learning, in many respects, this whole notion of agility is predicated on this idea of being uh, agile or being iterative, yeah. but it's also empirical. Knowing what the data is, knowing what the data says, and being opportunistic. How does a customer balance that as they get going, say early on in the cloud journey? Yeah, I, I think it's, again, if they, uh, most of what we're talking about in digital transformations is new insights that will help your business. It could be from data that you had, it could be new data. And if they think about it, what insights am I looking for? What new experience am I trying to create? And what do I need to do that? Then you start to see, you know, get people to step back and think, well, what are all the possibilities? And now how do we, you know, how do we tackle that? So it, it starts from realizing what insight am I looking for? So the, one of the, there's a lot of invention happening in the oh, industry. Yeah enormous new things being created. 
customers are being overwhelmed at trying to adopt them. The innovation side, the social yeah. side of affecting the change in the business. What are some of the, you mentioned some of the, the, some of the markers for success in putting together the strategy. Go forward a little bit. What are some of the successful, or so, what are some of the companies that have successfully gotten to that end stage maturity doing differently? You know, we, we have a number of very good ones. Uh, I mean, a, a very clear one in my mind is American Airlines, where they were really trying to change the experience. They had three distinct things that were had grown up over time, the mobile experience, the kiosk experience, and the uh, uh, web experience. Three completely different things. They brought it together, converged it, modernized it, and now completely changed the experience and the speed with which they can now act on what they see for their clients, or for their customers, all of us. But also, as they get new ideas, the, the, the speed and the velocity they can bring those in is phenomenal. And that improves their ecosystem, their ability to work with a lot of others as well. It, their ecosystem, how do we work with others, how to bring in new ideas, and this is all for them. It's all about client satisfaction and, and service to their end, you know, to their end user. That, that's what it was. It had a lot of technology dimensions, but they were very clear the experience they were trying to attack. So next February, IBM Think, 30 plus thousand people descending upon San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, you guys are taking it over. Uh, what kind of conversations are going to be on your agenda as you work with customers and partners to get this message out? Well, it's really two things. I, I often joke the, uh, the blessing and curse of IBM is the breadth of our portfolio. That's a very large place. But we actually have a very simple, clear way to talk to advise, move, build, and manage. Those are the steps you need in your journey. Now, which journey for you, which type of thing, but, but that we have clarity on that, and I think you'll see that displayed at, at Think and get to understand it. Uh, and the other thing is, is that we have a lot of experiential and real practical, you know, we've made this happen for many large clients at scale. And I think that, that what we want people to understand is we can help you that same way. It's really pretty simple. Jim Comfort. General Manager, Hybrid Cloud Services at IBM. Thanks for being on theCUBE. Thank you, Peter. And we'll be back momentarily with more from theCUBE at IBM Innovation Day here at the Thomas J. Watson Research Center in New York.